the sound comes back in this uh, into the chambers here. Uh, please rise for the invocation by Mr. Randolph and the pledge by Ms. Casabon. Gracious Father, once again, we come to you to say thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed on our lives, watching over us this day, keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you for this commission. We thank you for the parish that we serve. And Lord, we thank you for the citizens as well. In all these blessings, we ask that you also allow us to make the decision that's in the best interest of this parish and of citizens. And in all these blessings, we ask, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right, next item on the agenda's agenda is the approval of the May 6th uh, meeting, which was in your packet. Uh, I'll accept a, a motion to approve if there's not any uh, corrections that need to be made. Mr. Randolph, did you get your light on? Is that a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second by uh, Mr. Drum. Please vote. Motion carries, thank you. We also have the minutes of the June 3rd meeting. Are there any corrections that need to be made on that? I'll accept a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Randolph. Second. Seconded by uh, Mr. Hines. Please vote. Computer's running slow. It carries. Thank you. Staff, do we have any, have any cases that need to be postponed? No. All right. All right. Uh, item one on the agenda, uh, zoning case 14-06-051. Existing zoning is A1 Suburban District. Proposed zoning is A1 Suburban District and a manufactured housing overlay. It's one acre. Petitioner is Alfred N. Young, Jr. The owner is Alfred N. Young, Jr. and Glenn Marie Young. Partial located on the south side of Bomaca Road, west of uh, Highway 25, being 17140 Bomaca Road, Covington, Ward 3, District 3. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses, including manufactured homes. Staff does not have any objections to the request and would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, sir. Come up, state your name. Good evening. <clears throat> my name is Alfred Young, and my wife and I own this property. And um, we, it's a Bamoka Road, <clears throat> excuse me, is a half mile road that dead ends one mile north of Covington going toward Folsom. Uh, there are seven residents on the property, most with 10 plus or more uh, acre sites. This particular trailer, mobile home, has been there since Katrina. Uh, it was my plan to move it. However, my daughter, her husband died. She has three young children, has moved back to the area. And for that reason, I want to ask you on my property to allow this trailer to stay on one acre. Uh, I have a sky picture that I forgot in the car uh, that shows that it cannot be seen from the road. Uh, I keep my property up. It looks very, very good. It would not affect in any way the other residents' home values because of the way I placed it. And I also uh, paid $3,000 uh, to have it turned around after I first put it on there because I realized that the way it was placed, it you could see it from the road, and I did not want that. So um, I'm asking you all to allow me to keep this mobile home on the property, on the 10 acres that I have. And uh, that is what I'm asking for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Young. So Thank you. The trailer was on the property? Yes, sir. Before? Yes, sir. It's been there. It's been on there since Katrina. So... Why? Helen, basically, we're just, uh, he's asking for us to bring it into compliance with the, the manufactured housing overlay? Correct. Um, 
Mr. Young had applied for an administrative permit as a temporary residence after the storm, and he never removed the, the mobile home, so at this time he's asking to make it a permanent residence. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Ms. Casabon, I'll make I'll a motion to you. approve. Second. Second. We have a motion to approve uh, by Ms. Casabon, seconded by Mr. Willie. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, zoning case 14-07-052, existing zonings A1 Suburban District, proposed zonings A1 Suburban District, and uh, rural overlay RO, 17.362 acres of petitioners Connie Blue, owners of Chris and, and the Chris and Leon Roberts Irrevocable Trust, partially located on the south side of Meadowlark Drive, west of Russo Road, being 15258 Meadowlark Drive, uh, Covington, Ward 1, District 3. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed as a planned district with single family residences and a conservation area. The site is currently developed with a large agricultural building. The zoning change is being requested in order to make the current use conform with the appropriate zoning code. Staff recommends that the request for rural overlay be approved. Thank you. Well, I see we have uh, someone who wishes to speak. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Paul Marone on behalf of the Chris and Leon Roberts Irrevocable Trust. Um, this property has, uh, has been in the Roberts family for uh, a little over 70 years, and during that time it's always been used for agriculture purposes and has, has housed horses, uh, stables throughout the existence. Um, the request this evening for the rural overlay is necessitated only because of the fact that uh, the current owners are looking to expand and remodel one of the barns that are located on the, on the property. As a result of the comprehensive rezoning, the property is now A1, and uh, the refurbishment in addition to the existing barn, because of its size, can't take place without the rural overlay. So we're not proposing to change the use of the property in any way. Uh, rather, we're just trying to accommodate the use that's been there for all these years. So uh, that's the sole purpose. Uh, with that said, I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners may have, but we would respectfully request your approval for the rural overlay on the property. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Ms. Casabon. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, seconded by Mr. Willie. Any, Mr. Davis. Paul, is there, yes. is there a reason why you want the rural overlay over the entire 17 acres instead of just the building itself? Well, the entire 17 acres are part of the agricultural use. I mean, there are numerous horses there, and the the entirety of the property is used to house house the horses and has agriculture uses on it so okay so so the building itself that i'm looking at uh, from, from the google maps is actually part stables too as well that's correct all right thank you any further discussion any further questions by the commission we have a motion and a second please vote motion carries thank you Item 3, zoning case 14-07-053, existing zonings A4, single-family residential, proposed zonings HC1, Highway Commercial District, uh, acres are uh, 10,680 square feet, petitioner is Beach Strang Pham, uh, owner is Linda J. Williams, partially located on the west side of U.S. Highway 11, north of 2nd Street, being lots 9 and 10. Uh, and the address is 62065 Highway 11, Slide L, Ward 8, District 14. Staff? The site is currently developed with a convenience store and an attached residential dwelling. Note that prior to the comprehensive rezoning, the property was zoned C2 Highway Commercial, as staff has no objection to the request. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, motion runs. to approve. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Randolph. Do I have a second? Seconded second by Mr. Hines. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Page two, item four, zoning case 14-07-054, existing zoning A2 Suburban District, proposed zonings A2 Suburban District, and RO rule overlay. It's 3.7288 acres. This comes as, to us by a parish council motion of 5-1, partial located on the west side of Crawford Road, north of Louisiana Highway 41, Ward 6, District 6. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan recommends that the area be developed with commercial uses. The property is currently surrounded on all sides by rural overlay. Staff feels the requested rural overlay is appropriate for this site and fits with the surrounding land uses. Staff recommends a request for rural overlay designation be approved. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? I think that's my property. Um, okay. So Please come forward and state Crawford. your name. I didn't hear my name, but I'm Elaine Galliano, and it's my property. And prior to the comprehensive rezoning, I was with the rural overlay, and then it just was changed, and I just want it back because I do have horses. Okay. I want to thank you for, for coming tonight. Uh, too many of them on parish council motions, nobody shows up, and it makes it very difficult for us. But thank you for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Mr. Hines. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll make a motion that it be approved. It's, uh, I, I know this property, and, and uh, it, uh, it should have never been changed to start with, but that's the way it happened. So uh, I'll move it be approved. We have a motion by Mr. Hines, second by Mr. Richard. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 5, zoning case 14-07-055, existing zonings A2 Suburban District, proposed zoning A4 Single Family Residential District, and MHO Manufactured Housing Overlay. It's 2.31 acres. Uh, this comes to us by Parish Council uh, by motion five, of 5-1. Five parish parcels located on the north side of Gladys Road, east of Revere Road, Ward 1, District 1. Staff? The area in question is currently developed with a mix of stick-built homes and manufactured home at a density exceeding the A2 Suburban Zoning District. The objective of the zoning change request is to bring the parcels of land located at the corner of Gladys Road and Revere Road in conformity with the appropriate zoning and land use. So staff would like to recommend approval of the request. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Pub? I took a ride by there this afternoon just to take a look at the property so I'd have a feel for it. I think it's totally, it is totally appropriate that, that it be zoned the way that it's being requested. There's, there's manufactured homes all up and down the street, and, and I think it would be appropriate. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Lauren. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Casabon. Um, the way the uh, staff report is worded, uh, it says something the petitioner is requesting. Who is the petitioner? It's a general term that we always use for our, all of our staff reports, but it's, it's basically being requested by, by the council. But we really don't know who the person is uh, that's well, requesting it's, this. Basically, it's a group of, of people um, <coughs> On right now, there's currently a mobile home overlay on, on a portion of the property if you look at the zoning map. But there's a mix of, of mobile homes and there's a mix of single family residences. And we, we had a request for another mobile home overlay, but because of the size of the property and instead of just doing a spot zoning of just one parcel in the middle, and then after consulting with the councilman, Mr. Dean, then we thought that maybe it would be a better idea to propose or to suggest to rezone the corner, which would make the entire area conform to the mobile homes as well as to the lot size. Okay, thank you. So we've been actually not had any discussion with the petitioner. Well, we've had discussion with some of the property owners. However, um, because some came forward, but they're not obviously not present in the audience this evening. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, I see a hand up. In the back. Um, 
My name is Tim Miller. Uh, I live on the corner of Revere Road and Gladys Road, and uh, my family has owned all the property in that area for years and years. And uh, I, I live adjacent to where they're going to be moving the mobile home. I have no problem at all. Uh, like I said, most of everybody in that neighborhood is all family and been there for years and years. And I'm sure uh, everyone else is in agreement with us or they, or they would have been here to oppose. So I do appreciate it if y'all would let this go through. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Miller. Uh, please uh, fill out one of the uh, speaker cards. They're, they're right there on the corner. Yes. All right, uh, Ms. Casabon. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Ms. Casabon. Oh, do we already have one? We already have. Oh, did we? Did we? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. we did that. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I yes. just want to make it so clear we that we're not them. just doing a mobile home overlay. We're changing this from A2 to A4. That's correct. And the mobile home overlay. That's correct. Because we've been talking about the mobile home, but this is an addition to that. That's correct. Mr. Lauren, you, that, you, you understand that that is changing the zoning as well as adding the, the manufactured overlay. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Thank you, Mr. Miller, for coming up. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 6, zoning case 14-07-056, existing zoning is A1 Suburban District, proposed zoning is A2 Suburban District. Uh, it's 4.614 acres. The petitioner is Robert L. Bernard, the owners, uh, Diane Bolin, parcel located on the east side of Delane Road, south and east of Albert Thompson Road, being 79493 Delane Road, uh, Ward 2, District 3. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with agricultural and residential uses. Staff sees no compelling reason to increase the density in the area as the property is entirely surrounded by A1 zoning. Staff recommends denial. Thank you. Anyone in the audience? Uh, Mr. Bernard? Yes. How you doing? I'm Robert Bernard. The uh, reason why we want to have a zone change is we're trying to put her sister with her mother on the same property so they can take care of her because her mother's having, you know, she's 80 something years old. And they want to be together so they can take care of you, her mother. Okay. That, uh, a lot of folks are ha having to do that nowadays, too. So Pardon? A lot of people are having to do that now yes. to help take care of, yes. of family. Um, anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. Come up and state your name, please. And also, would, uh, do we have a speaker card on? We have one on um, Mr. Bernard. Okay. We have a speaker card on you. All right. Pardon? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you've completed a speaker card. Well, he's the, uh, he's the petitioner, so we have yeah, right. you gotta give me, I can't hear it too good. Okay. okay. Uh, you've completed anything you needed you to do. No. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I, I'm Diane Bolin, the owner of the property. And the reason, um, as Bobby told you, that we want to move a trailer on, another trailer on my property is because my mother has dementia, and we're trying to get my sister out there and my mother out there so that I can help my sister take care of my mother. And um, we really need to do this because we can't put her anywhere and my sister and I are fully able to take care of her together. So I hope you all find it in your hearts to approve this for us. It's really very much needed. Okay. All right. Please complete a speaker card. Uh, if you're going to put a mobile, you're going to put a mobile home on this. I already ha I already have a mobile home on the property. I, we would like to put another mobile home for my mother and my sister. Okay, uh, Helen, do we need to get uh, a manufactured over. housing overlay on this as well? If I'm not mistaken, there is already one, already but I have to double check on the map. It's just going to take me a few minutes to bring it up. I think there's another okay, way. so what do we need to do? Do we? I mean, you, you can move on to the next one, um, and then I can confirm in, the, in just a few minutes. I mean, you're not going to be able to add it to the, it would have, to, it, they would have to request another zoning change, 
But if okay. I'm not mistaken, it, it's already allowed on the property. So okay. I'm pretty sure All it right. is. Let her do some checking there on the computer to see if th there is a manufactured housing overlay. If not, then we'll have to come back <coughs> on that portion of it and, and re-advertise and, and everything. There was a mobile home there before we put our mobile home there. Right. It was so probably grandfathered in, to be honest about it. Okay. Okay. All but right. Let her look at that and... and uh, uh, thank you all very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Davis, you have a question? Yeah, I have a, I have a question to Helen. Helen, uh, isn't she allowed to have another mobile home on the site in A1, or is it too big of a square footage for that other mobile home? I'm not mistaken, when I spoke to the petitioner... Excuse hear. me, sir. Um, if I'm not mistaken, when I spoke to the petitioner, it would be greater than 1,000 square feet, so it would not be considered as a guest house, and unless if there was a change. Okay, and bo both of the mobile homes are greater than 1,000 square foot, and that's why we have to... If, okay. if I'm not mistaken, uh, yes, sir. I, I, however, okay. we can confirm no, with the petitioner or, or the owner. Curious. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, first of all, I would like to say good evening, and I apologize for being late. Um, but I do have something that I would like to speak on, and if, if, if I'm not in order, would you please let, correct let me, me? Let me stop you right there. Right now we're uh, dealing with zoning case 14-07-056, which is item 6 on the agenda. That's the only item we're dealing with right now. Is that the item that you want to speak on? No, it's not. Actually, okay. it was item number one. So how can I get We've back? We've already uh, addressed that issue. That uh, item was approved going from A1 to A1 with the manufactured housing overlay. That was approved. Okay. Um, if you disagree with that, you can fill out a, a, an appeal card, and it will be appealed to the council. Okay, I will. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Will on it be appealed on tonight or at another meeting? Well, no, it'll be at another meeting. It'll go to the parish council in 30 days, next, Terry? Next month, yes. Yeah, yeah 30, 30 days next Thursday. month. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. The uh, appeal cards are over on the uh, <coughs> end. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, Ms. Casabon? Ma'am? No, I had mine on for the next case. Uh, we're... Have you found it yet? I'm pretty sure there's an overlay, but. Okay. Do we want to take a list till the, uh, she finds out and move on to the next case and come back to this? Yeah. Let's. Motion to table. No, not. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. They will not be able to request a mobile home this evening. Okay. So if they so want to... We need to handle the, just the zoning change tonight, and they, they will have to come back and, and uh, handle the manufactured housing overlay. Mr. Chairman? If we yes, put sir. The, uh, I think so. I kind of broached that subject already with legal counsel, and he believes that possibly they can. Did, did, uh, yeah. it, uh, did it have an existing mobile home on the property? Yes. So it would be a non-conforming use? Because no, no, it was never given permission. Because it was never given permission. So what's the, it. Yeah, what's the size of the existing mobile home? I, I, I don't know the, the answer to that yeah. question. Ms. Bowen, uh, what, what is the size of the existing mobile home, the one that's already on the property? Are you talking square footage? I, I can tell yeah. you that. Yeah. Yes. 2,000 square foot feet. Yep. But the, the new one won't be too Scott. How big will the new one be? I'm not sure because she hasn't bought it yet. I mean... We're waiting to see if we get approved. It won't be as big as that. So she would be permitted to have one that would be a thousand yeah. or less. Or less. Right, right, but it, it has to be bigger because my okay. mother. Yeah. You know. Then you need the mobile home mobile. Home. Yes, sir. Okay. So, All right. so we. Thanks. So we're gonna. <laughs> am I understanding that we're going to wait a month and? They, no, they're going to have to wait. I mean, for the over uh, the, the overlay, if they do not have one, that whole area, I, I'm 
pretty sure there are more mobile homes and stuff. I, we we need to it hadn't been not delay this. Yeah. It hadn't been advertised. Yeah. Just, uh, Casbon, but we, if it is uh, one, well, that's to, what we're find, trying I'm to find out. I'm listening to what legal is, is telling us. Okay, okay I'm okay, looking I'm at it. I'm listening to what uh, uh, staff's telling us, okay? It, it's going to have to be advertised for the manufactured housing overlay. So, sorry to keep but, you waiting so long. I was finally able to pull up the map, and there is a mobile is. home overlay. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. All right. So all we need to do is deal with the zoning. So there is a mobile home overlay. After the council. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 votes on this next month. Yeah. Next month, then uh, they should probably approve it. Normally, they will. And. Okay. Can I just ask you a question? I, I don't quite wait, wait. understand what an overlay no, no. is or what the, all this means. It just means. allows you to put a mobile home on it, a manufactured they, housing on it. They have overlay days. Okay. okay. And, so and the why, overlay why is already. Why don't we have it approved tonight? What's the hold up? Me too. It, it is already approved. Uh, uh, Helen, Ms. Lambert was finally able to, to get it up on the computer. She was, uh, we were having a, apparently a little bit of problem getting into the program that she needed. And she looked at it, and it ha your, the property that y'all are looking at has a manufactured housing overlay already on it, okay? So you, don't ha you will not have to come back and request a manufactured housing overlay in order to be able to uh, put an additional trailer on. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Thank you. So we can make a motion to approve this? Yes. yes. I so move. Second. I'll second it. We have a motion by Ms. Casbon, seconded by Mr. Hines. Any further discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's see, that was 56, right? David. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just so there's no confusion on her part, we've approved it. We've Go. recommended it to the council. That's correct. And it's not approved until the council acts on it okay do you understand with Ms. uh bowling okay all right good deal uh item seven zoning case 14-07-057 existing zonings a1 suburban district proposed zonings a1 suburban district and ro rural overlay it's 18.44 acres of petitioner john and nanette martin and the owners, John and Annette Martin, partial located on the north and south sides of Ark Road, north of Boyd Road, east of Trichard Road, Ward 1, District 3. Staff? Staff feel that it feels that the requested rural overlay is appropriate for this site and fits with the surrounding la land uses and would like to recommend <coughs> approval of the request. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to speak? I thought I recognized the name, but I wanted to be sure. <laughs> I'm retired now, so I look different. <laughs> Dr. John Martin, uh, basically, uh, this is something I've been working on for about six years. I've been developing the land next to me, uh, have incorporated everything into, so to speak, a farm. Um, on Boyd, my property line on Boyd is actually next to a cow pasture, and if you go a little further back, it's a residential property, but there's a barn and courses and stuff like that. And that's sort of what that area looks like. And I'm looking to do a, um, a winery in the future, uh, not like uh, Pipe Train Vineyards, John Siegel, he's my hero, but uh, just a little boutique type thing that, that uh, in the future people are going to be able to come and taste my wine if they like it, buy a bottle of wine, or I'll be able to go to a festival or something. And... Um, um, and that's basically it. it it's a uh, it's, uh, rural air, and, and I like to do something with the land, um, something worthwhile for the parish. And I think that's always good. A winery is always good. Yeah. Any, Thank you, Mr. Martin. Any I, questions I, I, I that I can... If you got good wine, I mean, it, you know, you, it's, you it's, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Mrs. Casabon? <laughs> yes, I want... No, I don't have any questions. I'm just laughing because Red said to give you a hard time <laughs> and that he wanted the wine. But anyway, I make a motion to approve. This is totally second. appropriate for we that area. We have a motion by Ms. Casabon to approve, seconded by Mr. Willie. I, I was expecting somebody uh, to uh, 
maybe give you or Mr. Shane. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Any any further comments? Please vote. What kind of wine? <laughs> red red wine. Motion. Let's see. We're missing one. Doc, what kind of wine? That's really important. <laughs> uh, it's actually. Um, uh, Motion carries. Indiana, which is red, and Blanc de Bois, which is white. It's up to everybody. There you go. All right, item 8, zoning case 14-07-058, the existing zoning is A1 Suburban District. Proposed zoning is A1A Suburban District. It's 9.73 acres. The petitioner is Bradley and Robin uh, Schote. Owners, Bradley and Robin Schote. Partial located on the west side of Green Valley Road, south of Louisiana 1078, being 76351 Green Valley Road, Folsom, Ward 3, District 3. Staff? The 2025 future land use plan calls for the area to be developed with agricultural and residential uses. Considering that the site is surrounded by A1 suburban zoning, staff feels there's no compelling reason to increase the density in the area and recommends denial. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Schott in the uh, audience. Good evening. Hey, how are you? Um, basically, um, please state your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Robin Schote. Um, the owner of the property that is north of us, he owns six acres. Um, he has always been interested in purchasing. We have almost 10 acres. We have a house and then we have a barn. Um, he has always been interested whenever he bought the property north of us, if we ever wanted to get rid of our barn, that he would be interested in purchasing that. Um, not that he was going to I mean, you know, tear down or build. It's a fairly new barn and everything. Um, and we had proposed selling him five acres, which would leave us the 4.73. Um, my husband works overseas 30 days at a time. My girls are practically in college now, and 10 acres is kind of a lot for me to take care of 30 days at a time. So we thought it would be like the perfect opportunity to downsize with staying where we're at because we do like the area. Okay, thank you. And we do have a speaker card from you, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Anyone else wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Um, Mr. Davis. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Davis to approve. Second. Seconded by Mr. Matthews. Mr. Willie? Thank you. <laughs> All the lights went off for some reason. Any, any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 9, zoning case 14-07-059. Existing zoning is A2 suburban district. Proposed zoning is A4 single family residential district. It's 1.5 acres. The petitioner is Jeff Shane. Owners Mark and Casey uh, LLC. Partial located on the southeast corner of Mill Road and Josephine Road, Ward 3, District 2. Staff. The property is currently surrounded with residential uses on parcels of land of approximately one acre in size or larger. Staff feels that an increase in density in the area could be considered, seeing that there are approximately three warehouses in close proximity to the site, and that the north side of the Tammany Trace is developed with a mobile home park and some industrial uses. However, the requested zoning change to A4 zoning could potentially allow for the creation of six lots on the existing 1.5 acre parcel in question, which would create a significant increase in density in the area. So at this time, staff would like to recommend denial of the request. Thank you. Mr. Shane, uh, I good see evening. you made it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Doherty and Honorable Commission. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm in Covington, and I represent uh, the owner and petitioner in this case, uh, Mark and Casey LLC. Um, if you would, I would appreciate you taking a look at the vicinity map that's attached uh, to your staff report. A couple of things that I would like to bring to your attention that uh, line up with the staff report that Ms. Lambert just read. Uh, firstly, um, you will see, uh, maybe to give you some orientation, uh, to the north of the industrial zoning is Highway 36, the Abita Highway, running east-west. Uh, in fact, the property to the north that's zoned industrial is the Abita Brewing Company. That is on the north side of the Tammany Trace. Um, 
The parcel in question you'll see is lot one and two. It's linear, uh, more so in shape, uh, if you will. And I thought you would also be interested to know that although not zoned, um, the parcel immediately west of subject property um, is currently uh, an industrial use. It's a metal uh, fabrication uh, business. Also, the property immediately to the east of subject property, although not zoned industrial, is actually the site of a former gas plant. That's a large uh, series of metal buildings and things of that nature. So my client finds themselves having uh, purchased a property um, and uh, wanting to develop it into some single family residential opportunity on the trace. Um, you'll see where Mill Road is on the north side of the property. Uh, on the north side of Mill Road is in fact the trace. So um, he is surrounded, if you will, sort of like bookends with industrial uses on the west and east side, although they're not zoned industrial. He's clearly surrounded on the north side with industrial zoning and industrial uses with the exception of the MHO trailer park that you see on the north side of the trace. Um, we uh, understand and respect staff's comments. Um, I think that they felt that perhaps going from A2 to A4 uh, might be uh, too much of a jump. We respectfully disagree with that, but we do understand their concern as it relates to density. So when I got the staff report, we took a look at what some of the opportunities were. And if we go to A4, one thing that we will have to do, not only for subject property, but it will also be an enhancement to the area, we will have to provide central surge and water in order to develop these parcels as residential uses. And I want you to know that my client has gone to Utilities Inc. and gotten a letter of confirmation that they in fact can provide sewer to this property if it's appropriately zoned and resubdivided. Uh, they all, my client also went to the water district and confirmed that central water can also be brought to the site as well. So with that in mind, we came up with a configuration and rather than maxing the property out at perhaps a potential six units, we are suggesting that if we were to get a recommendation this evening and ultimately get zoning from the council, that we would seek to resubdivide lots one and two into lots 1A through lot 2B, which would be five 132 foot wide by 100 foot deep residential sites with central surge and water. A couple other things of note, if you have not been to the area, have not seen a Google or just aren't familiar with it, please look at the survey, which is the third page of your staff report and be aware that uh, lot four, if not formally subdivided, is de facto subdivided into two lots already, meaning that south of lot two, that lot has two homes on it. Uh, similar in size, similar parcels to what we're trying to do. Also, if you'll take a look at lot three, which is on the south side of lot one, you have a single home that's uh, up against the road, again, that would be of similar size. My point is, is that I think the type of homes and the parcel sizes that my client hopes to develop will be extremely compatible with the three existing homes that abut it. Uh, it's difficult uh, to envision the two A2 lots that would actually front the side streets. We think that the amenity for this property would be to have these homes front the trace so that people would be able to enjoy a front porch uh, this particular portion of the trace has a beautiful kind of green screen protecting the trace, the buffer. They'll have easy access to it for pedestrian, jogging, bicycling, bicycling, et cetera. And we think that it's a nice transition, if you will, from the industrial environment that you see as the bookends on each side, east and west, and also on the north side. It's a nice transition to step down to A4. We understand as you go further south that there are some parcels that certainly are on larger uh, lot sizes. So with those things having been said, uh, we hope that you will uh, see fit to recommend to the council uh, that we rezone this property to A4. Uh, my client will commit as part of the case this evening that if we get the recommendation and the matter goes through the zoning commission process that we in fact will seek resubdivision of the five lots and will in fact provide central surge and water as indicated. 
Uh, if any of you have any questions now or later, I'll be glad to address them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am, please come forward. State your name. My name is Janice Hazlett. I live on Ohio Road, and um, I would ask that you would keep the zoning as it is uh, because of the density problem. Right now, we have drainage problems on Josephine and all of that property that's supposedly going to be developed is all going to run downhill and it's all going to be part you know running off on us so I, I really request that you take that into consideration when all of this is is done it is just too many pieces of property on a small section on an acre and a half yes. thank you very much okay thank you anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this Yes, ma'am. My name is Christy Cotter. I live right next door to where the property is going to be placed. Um, I'm concerned with the number of houses that he's looking to build. Five to six is a lot of houses to butt right up against my property. The, um, my house was built a long time ago, and it sits, I mean, literally like five feet from the property line. That's just how it was done, I guess, back then. And so all of these houses are literally going to be just right through my window. It's just such a nice green open space that I think three houses, maybe four, would be realistic. But um, five to six just feels like too much um, traffic coming through and things like that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have a speaker card? Mm -hmm. um, okay. okay. Anyone else wish to speak on this? Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, my name's Michelle Hazlett, and I'm on Ohio Road, and my concern is drainage. For one, uh, the ditches fill up really quick and take a while for, to drain out, and also the traffic. Uh, we have um, quite a bit of traffic that runs up and down Josephine. You really don't have, if you have a party, you don't have really much area to park at on, in the streets. And, you know, the amount of space six lots would be on that acre and a half, you couldn't really park, a, you know, your cars in, a, in your own yards. So I would say, I, yeah, I would protest as far as going ahead and doing a big project like that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this? All right, Mr. Shane, we've uh, heard for and against, so we're going to the rebuttal phase now, and I'll turn the floor back over to you. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, well, with respect to the concerns about drainage, which are, I understand and certainly respect, I think all of you know that any new construction and new development are going to have to meet uh, parish standards with regard to drainage. That will not only be the drainage of these parcels, but also the consequences of the drainage from these parcels to the existing drainage systems that is there. So um, I don't think it's an unfair statement to make that developing this property in all likelihood w may actually end up improving the drainage in the area. Oftentimes we find that when it's sparsely developed, meaning on this particular section of the street, um, the ditches have not been maintained as well. And uh, again, there may be some drainage issues, particularly when we have some of these uh, inundations that we've had of the last couple of months from time to time. So as to drainage, I would only say that, as you know, we're going to be required to meet code, but I would hope that actually developing the property may actually improve the drainage conditions. With regard to density, I would suggest that this density is fairly modest if you look at other residential density in the area. Certainly if you look on the north side of the trace in the trailer park, it is a much denser residential uh, development. Again, if you look at the property immediately adjacent to it, and that's uh, the lots that I referred to you earlier, lot four, 
those homes and lots are very similar. Now with regard to the setback or the proximity of the one lady's home to the property line, the only thing I can say is the code will protect that we must establish whatever code requires by way of a rear setback from that property line. So I don't know why that home was built where it is, but the point is is that there should be significant separation and in fact there's likely to even be fencing along the rear line which hopefully would create some privacy between the properties. Last but not least as it relates to traffic, I don't think that five homes is going to create so much traffic that it's going to be problematic. I also think that each of these homes will have driveways which will facilitate off-street parking so it's not as if we're going to have parking on the streets or in the street right-of-ways. This is not a large development. This is an opportunity uh, to redevelop a piece of property that had uh, trailers and structures on it many years ago that uh, now have been abandoned. And, and quite frankly, I think, I don't know if it's fair to say that it's an eyesore, but let's just say that the property could certainly be improved. It would look much nicer. And I think at the end of the day, with five nice finished homes, with appropriate landscaping and lawn, with good drainage, um, with driveways for the parking of the cars for the residents that live there, this will be compatible with what is in that area. And I think what will actually be a, a plus. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shanks. Of the four or five people that, that spoke, we have five minutes for you all to come back and, and rebut what Mr. Shane has, has said. That's five minutes total. I'm concerned with the 4A because there are numerous 4As with A's and D's attached to them. Each has different requirements. But let's just take the best scenario, okay? The best scenario is two side yards having a minimum of 10 feet. You're talking about 135 feet. So there's 10 feet on each side. From the rear of the property, you have to have a setback of 25 feet. That's with a 4A, it's an A4D. That's what the requirements are. I just think it's too much on a small piece of property like that. And it gets even worse for an A4 AD. Uh, at that point, you have 20 feet that you need. You have a property that's what, 100 feet, you said? 100 feet deep? Yes, ma'am. 100 feet deep. So you're talking about a 20 foot setback. You're talking about a 20 foot from the rear. That's 40 feet. So you're talking about what? So 80 feet? No, 40, what is it, 20, 20 feet and 30 feet, 50 feet. So that gives you 50 feet to take and build a house or a bird house. That's all I have to say. It's just too much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this? I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Davis. Yeah, Jeff. Yes, sir. In some ways, I, I have to agree with the uh, planning department about the density situation, but I'm looking at lots three and lots four currently, right just south of the area that you want to mm -hmm. increase. Now, lot four, as you said, had two homes on the site. Yes. And lot three has one home on the site. Correct. So realistically, lot three and lot four is the same equivalent as your lot one and lot two. No. Well, no, sir. I mean, I well. I, it's I don't roughly know. equivalent to the total volume if it's 80 by 132 times 5. Well, lot, lot, if, if your question is lots 3 and 4 are the same size right. in aggregate as 1 and 2 area, if that's right. the point you're making? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. But, but those well, lots, I mean, those I mean, lots do not have the benefit of central surge and water. No, I, I understand that too, and, and I understand. And, and their orientation are to Mill Road and Josephine Road, whereas right. our property will be oriented, if you will, to what I guess I'll call North Mill Road. As you can see, Mill Road runs on two sides of this property. As far as the mobile homes on the uh, north side of the trace, mm -hmm. that's kind of blocked anyway, so that really doesn't come in the, into the picture. Of, of things, I, I still think that uh, your best your best situation on this is to go to A three and just build three homes on that on those that 
to a lot one and lot two and do you know one yes, one a one b yes sir, the, if if you had central surge and water in the ground already in front of the property that might be more understandable from a planning perspective and an economic perspective but that's not the case the surge and water is going to have to be extended to this location and in order to make it work uh, reasonably for up uh, talking about economically um, you, you need to have five units so the two additional units have to be there to make it economically feasible to be able to run sewage the, the best and water to and extend water. the sewage and the water yes sir because it, it's you know significant infrastructure and to do it and only increase the the density if you will by one meaning going from two lots to three uh, the economics simply don't just those apply. lots just south of the area you you wish to develop those lots don't have central sewage i do not believe they do if i'm mistaken i'm sure the residents i, I don't know about the people on ohio but i'm talking about the lots that immediately ab abut this i do not believe they have central sewage and water no, it's, it's just that I'm just, con obviously I'm concerned about the density of that because it just, to me, it just seems that the five or six homes might be a little too dense for the area, personally. That's what I believe. Well, I understand, I guess beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. Right. I, I would only suggest it's surrounded by an industrial shield, yeah, right. east, west, and north. And that's why we thought Does any that this size lot might be appropriate. No. All right, thank you. Thank you. Also, we're seeking A4 and not... Is there A4A. anyone else that li that has central water and sewage in those homes that that y'all live in? I do. I live right next door, and I have. I have central water. Do y'all have it? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you ask her to come up, Martha? Why don't you ask her to come up to the uh, podium? So we can. Um, I'm in the property right next door, and I do have um, central water and sewage. So. And Lot three. Okay. And the other two. Is this a personal uh, sewage system or is it uh, or, or is it a city type? It's a city. It's a city. Oh, okay. Thank you. So they tie it in. Okay. Ms. Casbon, anything else? Uh, just looking at it, I understand about it being economically, you, you would need the five, but I think the proximity to the trace. Um, and and the type of houses, what type were y'all looking at at building um, to that would help with the the uh, drainage? Uh, we got raised or these will be stick built homes on slab and on approximately twelve hundred or so square feet. Okay. They would have to be like a shotgun because of the size of the lot or the... Well, the, the lot itself is actually a pretty good size the, in the sense that it's 132 feet wide. But the building envelope part of it, where you would actually put Well, a, if you could assume that maybe a, a 30 by 40 or, uh, would be 1,200 square feet to give you an idea of the approximate model. I mean, there's plenty of room on this lot to meet the code setbacks and, and more. That's one of the reasons that we wanted to subdivide it with an orientation on North Mill Road with 132 feet of depth. I think actually the rear setback requirement is 25 feet, and there will be certainly enough land to do that um, no matter what the depth uh, of the structure itself is. On that. Mr. Willick. I guess I have a question of staff. Uh, the lady mentioned uh, about rear setbacks. What, what would be the rear setback, 20 or 25? 25 feet. 25 feet, because the other lady mentioned her line was, she was just five feet from the property line. So it would be 30 feet away from the possible house. Yeah, well, the, the lot that she owns is 80 foot wide, so. so it's 330 feet deep. So that's probably yeah. the reason why she, she well, I'm just saying there'd be, be at least feet. 30 feet between her and the next house. Yes. Instead of right next door. Correct. And well, unless if they face it, they, they have the house facing Josephine, and, then it would be. Y'all mentioned something about screening or a fence. So, I mean, you take that in consideration as well. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Mr. Matthews. What, what's the rear setback on these lots, Jeff? 25. I believe in looking at A4. And in particular, I'm looking at uh, 
section 5.0904B4, a rear yard having a depth of not less than 25 feet and one foot in height, one additional foot for every foot in height above if the structure is more than 20 feet. So I think you can assume it's going to be single story structures. So it's going to be a minimum of 25 feet. What is this on the, uh, the plat you gave us? That uh, it's not. No, sir, I'm, I'm giving you the zoning. If, mm -hmm. if the zoning, if in fact the property were rezoned to A4, okay. uh, your code requires a minimum rear setback okay. of 25 feet. Okay. Well, this uh, seven and a half feet is, is what? Why, why is that on there? What does that tell me? Um, help me out, Mr. Matthews, and I'll... Is this, uh, Jeff? Yes, sir. That, I now see it. Okay. okay. Um, that is obviously what I'll call just a sketch or model. Um, when the property was acquired, it was acquired as lots one and two. We had the surveyor just do a draw over to give you a presentation of the orientation of the five lots. Obviously, those setbacks would have to be taken would be changed okay. if, in fact, the property were zoned uh, to A4 because, as you know, it ha has to meet your yeah, code. I, 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 that yes, sir. I'd be confused. We haven't we put seven point five. You'll notice the signature blocks are not on this. This was really done in response to staff's comment that maybe the density of six, potentially six, would be too great. We thought it would be better to give you an idea of what we hope to do and show you the five in question. Would would four lots? Uh, not be uh, economically feasible. Uh, no, you don't, sir. You don't have to, to run the, the surge and water too far if lot three already has it. Well, I'm not sure where those lines come from that they have. I'm, I'm not doubting that they have it, so don't. I don't want anyone to misunderstand mm -hmm. me. I just know that we got, we went to the utility companies and have run our pro forma based on figures that they have provided are discussed with us, and we believe that we need five units to make it economically feasible. Five just seems like a lot, Jeff. That, that does concern me, though. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, from the commission, anyone have any further questions? Can I say Mr. Davis? Ma'am, I've already closed the floor to the public at this point. Right. Back to the commission. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, would, would, would you want to... Uh, Reissue the motion to make it from A2 to A3, just out of curiosity? No, sir. Okay. I'll make a motion to deny. We have a motion by Mr. Davis to deny. Clear. Second. Do we have a second? Seconded by Mr. Drum. Uh, that's a machine clear. You can go ahead and. No, you can't. Vote. Sorry. I had the wrong. Could you clear it again, please? Just, just to clarify, the motion being to deny and. If you vote yes, you are voting to deny it. That's correct. Does everyone understand that? All right. Please vote. All right. We've got uh, seven yeas and three nays, so the motion uh, is denied. So, all right. All right, item, page three, item 10, zoning case 14-07-060, existing zonings NC4 neighborhood and institutional district and A4 single family residential. Uh, proposed zoning is NC4 institutional district, A4 single family residential district, and, the and MHO manufactured housing overlay and RO rural overlay. It's 2.91 acres. The petitioner is Lisa Mitchell. The owner is Gregory Mitchell. Parcel located on the south side of US 190 West, east of Transmitter Road, west of South Tranquility, being 30414 US Highway 190 West, Lacombe, Ward 7, District 11. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the property to be developed with residential uses. There's an existing single family residence on the property. The zoning change is being requested in order to allow for the placement of a manufactured home on the site and also to allow for some agricultural uses. Prior to the comprehensive zoning, the parcel was zoned C2 Highway Commercial. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. 
<laughs> Carlos, I'm going to ask that, you know, you, thank you. All right. Uh, in, is uh, Lisa or Gregory Mitchell? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. My name is Lisa Mitchell. I'm the owner of the property. Um, I'd like it changed with a rural overlay so I can bring horses there. And also, if I so choose to, to put a mobile home on it for my daughter, because she doesn't like to live that far from home. And that's it. Okay. All right. Anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Um, no one else wishes to speak on this in the audience, so I'll close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Davis. Yeah, Ms. Mitchell. Yes, sir. I don't have a problem with the mobile home overlay, but I may have a problem with the roll overlay only because of the horses right up on uh, 190? Uh, yes. How would you section that out for the horses not to be, you know, right, right next on to the, the highway. street? Yeah. I put um, a total privacy fence behind my house. So there's like one acre in the front that's open. It's not really open. There's a fence in front of the, uh, the highway. And then there's a privacy fence where they can't get out of. And that's where I'd like to put them. Is, there, is there a possibility? I see it's three acres. Is there a possibility of maybe cording off and having a roll overlay on the back of your property and leaving the horses there? Is that what you intend on doing? Yes. And how big is that? Okay. What is it? 218 by? About 200. So it's 400 square foot? Okay. So, so you're looking roughly about one acre in the back, correct? Yes. Up to your fence line. So oh, okay. I don't have a problem putting the mobile home overlay, in the, but with the rural overlay, can we just make the rural overlay on the back one acre property? That's fine. I'll make a motion for that. Second. Okay. If you're willing to, to, to do that. just That's the, fine. The, I don't want them in the front it's just anyway. The fact, the fact of having, you know, the horses up there, you know, if, I, if we grant the rural overlay in the front, you could put the horses all the way up in the front, and that would might be dangerous. Right, and I wouldn't want to do that because no, they're like my not. children. So right. even though my daughter is here, but anyway, <laughs> she understands. <laughs> but they're, uh, the privacy fence that I put up, you can't see back there because I don't want anybody to see that I have right. them, and I don't want them to be able to see that, you know, there's extra grass in the front. Yeah, well, look, looking at the schematic and everything, everything from the privacy fence back looks like that would be fine for the rural overlay. Okay. Uh, Helen, does she have to change? No, we'll take care of it. Okay. Um, you know, she just has to, if she wishes to agree. To okay. That's fine. I I'll agree. make a motion for that. Okay, Jimmy, state your motion now so that we get it right the first time. I'll through. make I'll make a motion. Um, the motion is I'll grant the NC4 and A4 to NC4 A4 mobile home overlay on the entire property, but the rural overlay only on the rear one acre. That's fine. Okay, we have a motion and a second. You've, you've heard it stated, <laughs> Mr. Richard. I have a quick question. Um, Staff, there's a PUD immediately looks like to the, I guess, to the east and south. Can you tell me what that is? It, it's a residential PUD. I, I don't think it's, it's been developed at this time. I, I was kind of wondering about that, if we're going to have horses, and not everybody's horse people. Um, I'm just curious. Let me bring you a, an aerial, which okay. would probably facilitate. Okay, because if it's facilitate. a PUD that's not developed yet, that might... Tell me why there's no one in the audience. That answers my concern. You comfortable? Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Pardon? Come on. You can get that 
contain any vitamins today. Huh? All right. <laughs> now it's clear. Been cleared. Yeah. Please, please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 11, zoning case 14-07-061, existing zonings A2, suburban district, proposed zonings A2, suburban district, and <coughs> manufactured housing overlay, MHO. Uh, it's 4.49 acres. The petitioner is Donnie Higgin Gotham, and the owner is Donnie and Trina Smith, partial located on the northeast corner of Alamosa Lane and Cary Road, being 37325. Alamosa Lane, Pearl River, Ward 8, District 9. Staff? Staff has no objection to the request and would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Gotham, or, okay, <laughs> yep. please come, come forward. It's Higginbotham, not Gotham. Oh, Higg Higginbotham, yeah. Higginbotham. Danny <laughs> Daniel Higginbotham. That's All good. right. <laughs> Well, it's got Higgin yeah, and Gotham yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on the word. agenda. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, do you, what do you have? Yeah, we're, we're, we're just trying to get, uh, me and my wife are trying to move in uh, double wide there. And uh, right now it's not set up for mobile home overlay. I went and got uh, all the signatures from all the, my, my, our neighbors around the area. No one, no one seems to, to mind having it put in. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let me, uh, anyone else in the audience wish to speak? All right, I'm going to close the floor to the public, bring it back to the commissioners. Uh, Mr. Hines. Yes, this, uh, there's, there's been, we just approved one right down the street from this uh, not long ago for uh, another couple. Uh, there's quite a few mobile homes in that area already. Uh, I don't see a problem with it, and I'll move it be approved. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a, and a second by Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, any old business that we need to deal with? Any new business? I'll accept the move to adjourn. Thank you.